Hi everyone, my name is Christina. I'm with Sweatshop Hot Yoga Studio in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. And today we're going to do a 30 minute stress relief class. So it'll be similar to one of our flow classes, which means that we'll move nice and slow, go through our different poses very smoothly and try to be as graceful as we can. And to help relieve stress, what we're going to do is focus on opening up the heart. So expanding it through the chest and shoulders along with the hips. So with that, let's get started. I'll meet you on your mats. So we're going to start today in a child's pose. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can have either your knees together or your knees nice and wide apart. I prefer to do my child's pose with my knees wide apart. And we'll take a few breaths here. Your forehead can be resting on your mat. Take a deep breath in and a nice deep breath out. And we'll take two more breaths here. Nice deep breath in and breathe out and one more inhale and exhale we'll come to a tabletop position so elbows wrists and shoulders should all be in a nice straight line above one another and knees can be about hip width distance apart we're going to do a few cats and cows in our warm up here. Again, we'll coordinate this to our breath. So as we breathe in, we're going to sink our bellies nice and low and look up to the sky. And as we exhale, we'll round our back into cat. So you can move at your own pace here, just making sure that you're following along. Inhaling to cow and exhaling to cat. Inhale, cow, and exhale, cat. We'll take two more rounds here. Inhale, cow, look up to the sky, belly low. And exhale, round your back for cat. And last one, inhale, cow, and exhale, cat. So today's class is all about relieving stress, which means we're going to spend some time opening up our chest, shoulders, and heart along with our hips. So from our tabletop position, you can kind of pivot onto your knee. So you're balancing on your left knee and left hand and right leg can go out long towards the back of your mat and just lift your arm overhead. If you'd like to add a little bit of a challenge to this move, you can lift up your right leg, but feel free to rest it on the ground as well. And take a few breaths here. Make sure that you're really opening up your chest and not hunching over. So nice open chest. We'll take a couple more breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. And if you'd like, maybe bend your right knee and grab your foot behind you and open up the chest and shoulder just a little bit more. You can look up to the sky here, just remembering to breathe. We can extend nice and long. And we'll repeat that on our other side. So right hand, right leg stays on the mat. Our left leg is gonna come nice and long behind us. Left arm overhead. If you'd like, you can lift that left leg a little bit, keeping the chest open. So really drawing your shoulders back and breathing. We can take an inhale and exhale we'll do one more breath here inhale and exhale and if you'd like maybe bend that left leg and grab your foot to open up the chest a little bit more
And one last inhale here. And exhale. Coming back to our tabletop, we're going to do some fire hydrants. So I don't know what you guys call these, but this is how I learned back in high school. So we're just going to keep our leg bent at a 90 degree angle. And then we're just gonna lift it up so that it's parallel to the ground. You don't have to hold it there. So we're just going to kind of do pulses. So when we inhale, we'll lift up and exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, and try to do these nice and controlled. Inhale up, exhale down, and we'll do that one last one. So inhale up and exhale down. We'll repeat that on the left side. So inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, left leg comes up, and exhale down. We'll do three more. Inhale up, exhale down. Again, nice and controlled. Inhale up, exhale down. And our last one, inhale up, and exhale down. From here, we're going to push back into a downward dog. So here your feet can be about hip width distance apart. And you wanna make sure that you're hinging at your hips with a flat back if possible. Maybe take some time to walk out your dog here. Maybe bend your knees. For me, if I bend my knees, I'm able to have a little bit more of a flat back. So it works a little better for me. And from here, we're going to shift our weight forward into upward facing dogs. So you're going to pull your body forward, flip your feet under, and come into our upward facing dog. We'll move pretty quickly through these, so we'll push back up into downward facing dog. You can take a couple of breaths here. And roll forward into Upward Facing Dog. Push your hips up to the sky for Downward Facing Dog. And we can come forward into Upward Facing Dog. You can think of raising or lifting your heart here. So in your chest and maybe the back of your shoulders nice and tall. Right, and we'll come back to Downward Facing Dog. And we're gonna walk with our hands back to our feet. Okay. And we'll come into Mountain Pose. I'm gonna face you guys. So in Mountain Pose, our big toes can be touching, palms facing forward. And we're just gonna do a few neck circles here. So feel free to go clockwise and then maybe switch it up and go the other way. Maybe close your eyes here and just focus on breathing and stretching out your neck. If it's painful to put your neck backwards, maybe just stop at a neutral position and do almost a minute like a half circle here, that works as well. And then we're just gonna do some shoulder circles. So you can start rolling your shoulders forward. And maybe a good rule of thumb here is do an inhale for one rotation and exhale the next rotation. And we'll flip that around and go the opposite way. So maybe rolling your shoulders forward. And then we'll do some arm circles. I cannot do both of my arms at the same time for the life of me, so I'm gonna do one arm at a time. So I'll start with my right arm. And whichever direction you'd like to start with is fine. Again, maybe inhaling one rotation 
and then exhaling the next. And we can switch directions. Really trying to open up the shoulders here and expand through the chest. If you're really talented and did both arms at once, great for you. <laughs> I'm gonna switch on over to my left side. So do some same, same thing here. Focusing on opening up the shoulder and breathing as we move through our rotations. And we can do the opposite direction. From here, we'll bring both of our hands overhead. I like to clasp all of my fingers and then release my index fingers. And then we'll extend nice and tall up to the ceiling. And we're just going to take some mini side bends here, moving left to right. So again, here, try to make sure that you're opening up your shoulders and that they're not, you know, curled in. And then let's take an inhale to stand up nice and tall. And we'll exhale to our right side. And we'll hold this here for a few breaths. And we can come up to the middle with a nice big inhale. And as you exhale, down to your left side. We'll take one last inhale and exhale before returning to the center and your arms can come back down to mountain pose. From here we're going to do a yogi squat. So your feet can be a little bit wider than hip width distance apart. And there's a few different ways to do this. So if you'd like to have a more active squat, you can just sit down and kind of hover your bum, or you can sit all the way down and hang out a little bit lower. So active is just raised up a little and lower is more of a resting pose. Let's take a few breaths here. And we'll take one last inhale together. And exhale, we can rise up. And then we're gonna clasp our hands behind our back. If that's difficult for you, you can either grab opposite elbow or maybe opposite wrist or hands, whatever feels good for your shoulders. So legs can still be a little bit wider than hip width distance apart. And with our hands clasped behind us, we're just going to do a forward fold. So the crown of your head here should be facing the ground. And really draw your arms over your back and try to extend them nice and long in front of you. You can inhale and exhale. And one last inhale and exhale. And we're just going to bend our right knee and open up to the left side. And we'll take a few breaths here as well. And we can come back to neutral and bend the left leg, opening up to our right. In positions like this, where we feel our balance is challenged a little bit, try pulling your belly in. So it's really about not, not holding your breath, but drawing your belly in towards your spine, which will help you engage your core and stabilize. 
All right, we can come up out of that and then make your way into a downward facing dog. And we'll raise our right leg. I'm gonna have you bend your knee and then we're going to do some circles with our leg. This might feel a little awkward, but go whichever direction feels good for you. We're just trying to get some mobility and open up the hips here. So see if you can do five rotations on that right side, and then we'll reverse it. So five rotations the opposite direction. It helps to breathe here. Okay, we can lift that right leg nice and high. We're gonna bend the knee again and stack our hips. So that means that we want our hips nice and open to the side. And then very gently, you can place your right foot down on the ground. Your left side or foot is going to pivot open into a wild thing pose. So again, opening up the chest here and taking a few breaths. And we can return to our three-legged downward dog. We're gonna bring our right foot in between our hands. Our knee can come to the mat with our hands overhead. We'll just gently lean back into the right side, really stretching into your left hip and the front of your hip or thigh. Take a few breaths here. And one last inhale and exhale. We can bring our hands to the mat and we're going to move into pigeon pose. So just gonna kind of toe heel your right foot over to your left hand and then set your leg down in front of you. If your hips or hamstrings are tight like mine are, this might be a little challenging for you. We'll take a few breaths with our chests up nice and high. Make sure that your left leg is nice and long behind you. And then if you'd like, you can come down to your forearms or maybe even cross your arms to make a pillow and rest your head. And we'll take a few breaths here in reclined pigeon. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. And we can gently come up and push back into downward facing dog with our hips nice and high. We're actually gonna come forward to plank position. We'll lower down into low plank and then move right into upward facing dog. So low plank and upward facing dog, opening up our chest and back down into downward facing dog. We'll repeat that same mini sequence on our left side. So left leg raises up to the sky, bend your knee. We're gonna do some leg circles here. So try to go for about five as you're breathing. And we'll switch the direction. This might feel a little awkward. It's not a movement that we do very often. And we can lift our left leg nice and high, bend the knee again. So your foot is gonna to come to the outside of your right foot. So you're just kind of flipping over. As you turn over, the side of your right foot should be on your mat. And your arm can come overhead for a wild thing. And a few breaths here. And 
then we can come back into our three-legged dog. So left leg is nice and high. We'll bring that left foot in between our left hands. Place your right knee down. Hands come up overhead. We'll just gently back bend and maybe to the left a little bit to really feel a stretch in our right hip. Don't forget to breathe here. And we can bring our hands to the mat. Toe heel your left foot over to the right side of your mat for pigeon. And again, right leg should be nice and straight behind you. We'll start with our chest up, taking a few breaths here. So now we should be feeling a stretch, maybe in your left hamstring. Maybe your right leg as well. And we can come down to our forearms or maybe you rest your head on your arms for reclined pigeon. And we can come back up to our downward facing dog. And we'll come to our high to low plank or chaturanga. So we'll start in high plank, move to low plank, and upward facing dog. And we can push our hips back into downward facing dog. And then we're gonna walk with our hands back to our feet. And then we're gonna do a nice wide-legged forward fold. So you want your feet to be maybe about three or four feet away from each other here. And we're just gonna bend down, hinging at our hips. Crown of your head should be facing the ground, so upper body hanging nice and low. And then you can walk your hands over to your right leg Take a few breaths on this side. And we'll walk over to our left leg. Again, taking a few breaths here. And from here, we're going to do some goddess twists. So legs can stay at about the same distance, maybe move them in just a smidge. And then in goddess, we're just coming into kind of a squat type position. Your hands can be on your knees and we're gonna just twist our shoulder in. So we'll start with our right side. So your shoulder is gonna come a little low and take a few breaths here. And we'll do the same on our left side, dropping that shoulder nice and low. It helps to straighten your left arm. That's how you'll get a twist in there. And we can come back up. And you can make your way to a seated position on your mat. We're gonna do just five rounds of high to low boat pose. So boat pose we did the other week. There's a couple different variations, but you wanna sit with your legs up and arms up. If you'd like, you can also extend your legs. Actually, I have to move up a little bit here. So you can extend your legs if you'd like. And we're just going to move, this is our high boat, low boat. And make sure that we're breathing here. So we can exhale, low boat, inhale, high, and we'll just do three more. Low to high, low to high, low to high, and last one, low to high. It's hard for me to breathe and talk during those, so I think you guys did great. <laughs> 
So we're gonna come back into our tabletop position and we'll come into lizard pose. So I don't know that there's necessarily a graceful way to do this, but I just kind of swing my right leg down in front of me and then extend my left leg nice and long. You can stay here on your hands if you'd like, or if you have a little bit more space, you can maybe lower down to your forearms. And take a few breaths here. We'll do one big inhale together and an exhale. And then we'll switch sides. So I like to bring my right leg back into like my tabletop position and then bring my left leg forward. And again, you can stay on your hands here if that feels good for you. Or maybe if you have a little bit extra space, you can try lowering down to your forearms. And one last inhale here. And exhale. We're gonna to come to just an easy seated position. So your legs can be crossed, crisscross applesauce. And then we're just going to do a seated forward fold so arms can come nice and long overhead. And lower down to the mat. Maybe your forehead touches the mat. Taking a few breaths here. We're going to come back into tabletop for the last time today. And we'll actually come into a kneeling position. We're going to do camel pose. So again, there's a couple different variations here. You're gonna place your hands on the back of your hips, almost like you're putting them into your jean pockets that we all haven't worn in like five or six weeks. And then just gently push your hips forward to expand your chest. So this is one variation of camel. Or if you have the back flexibility, you can grab your heels with your hands, push your hips forward, and maybe relax your neck. So let's take a few breaths here. And then to come up, you can place your hands and into your pockets and just push back up. And then we'll lay down on our backs. We're going to do happy baby pose. So your legs can come up and grab the outsides of your feet with your hands. Try to pull your knees into your chest. That will help get a little bit of a stretch in the hamstrings. You can gently roll side to side here if that feels good on your back. And then we'll bring both knees into our chest. We're gonna give ourselves a nice big hug with our neck still nice and long on our mat. Keep the right leg into your chest. Your left leg can extend long just gonna squeeze our right leg into our chest here. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a twist. So your right knee is going to come across your body down to the left side. And your right arm can come nice and long, maybe in a goal post or cactus position. And then if it feels okay for your neck, you can gaze over your right shoulder. And we'll take one last breath here. And exhale. We'll do the same on our other side. So right leg comes nice and long. We'll hug our left leg into our chest. Just a few breaths here.
and we'll go for our twist. So left knee is gonna come across your body and onto the ground to your right and gaze over your left shoulder. Both of your shoulders, the back of, of your shoulders should be still touching your mat. If they're not, maybe just ease off of your knee a little bit and allow yourself to come up. All right. We will just do a quick full body stretch. So legs and arms can both come nice and long, stretching out our bodies. Before we come up to a seated position. And arms can come overhead. We'll take a few last breaths here, stretching nice and long. Gently bring your hands together overhead and bring your hands down to heart center. Namaste. I hope you guys enjoyed today's class of yoga for stress relief. It was so much fun having you and I hope you can go about your day a little bit more at ease and peaceful and now that we're nice and open through the chest, shoulders, and hips, and just knowing that if something is challenging us, we can always come back to our breath and focus on the present moment. Thank you again for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.